give us a quick opening statement, your thoughts on the match. Yeah, uh, first, congratulations to Phoenix. Um, you know, obviously, they're, they're a team and a club that has aspirations, and, and tonight um, was so tough uh, for us. Uh, but in the end, uh, we were able to do it. So congrats to Phoenix. Um, I thought it was a hard-fought game, and it came down to uh, executing off a restart, um, something we've been good at. Uh, in recent uh, games, so, uh, but I also thought we played some good soccer, and I'm proud of the way that we performed tonight, the energy that we put out on the field. Um, this guy did all right, so I'll let him talk next. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Paulo, a lot of talk this week from the guys about this brotherhood that's been established between you all. There's just such a family aspect, so much chemistry. Can you touch on that, that bond that you have in the locker room, these guys? Yeah, I mean, for real, well, first, first of all, it's been, uh, you know the same core guys for a long time so you know we we had a lot of the guys for two years and and we all live in the same area and we all you know hang out eight hours a day so we get to know each other pretty well and and uh we're all very committed to what we're trying to do and i think that's what just leads to to kind of bonding as a team and and on top of that literally every person in there is a good person and i think that's what's most important so uh, it makes it easy to be friends with them take some questions Coach, uh, along with obviously being captain, Paulo's been one of your best players all season, past percentage, tackles. Uh, aside from leadership qualities, what does he bring to you in that number six role? Well, I, I think I, I messed with him a little bit by uh, putting him back there. Uh, but he, I mean, he did such a wonderful job that um, I think he has the qualities to, to you know, go forward as well. Um, but like every guy, when they're asked to do something that will benefit the team, uh, they do it. And the leadership that Paulo has uh, shown in that locker room says volumes. I mean, he was in charge of the group for six weeks without a coach. And um, he talked about yesterday having to go through, you know, the weeks with film and, and trying to play. And so it was just impressive. I'm so happy for him and the rest of the team. Coach, you knew you were coming into a good situation, but was there a point where in the season or maybe the playoffs that you thought, hey, we can go win this thing? Yeah, honestly, I mean, this is the truth. I told somebody earlier, uh, yeah, you and Justin, that it was probably, you know, somewhere on a winning streak. But the truth is that it probably happened in the first or second day of training because I was like, holy cow, this these guys, I mean, the way they competed in training and then – went back in the locker room and I thought I was going to have to settle some fights and stuff and they just they're 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 a brotherhood you know what I mean so they they have this high standard and they want to be pushed they want to be coached and I felt like oh my god if, if we can get this right if we can get some some ideas right if we can clean up a few things I thought you know um it was going to happen coach first of all congratulations on the win and second of all what are some of the aspects of uh, Phoenix's game that you think your team exploited the most? Well, look, I, I thought we uh, moved the ball better than they did. And I thought that we were able to unbalance them with our ball movement, but our, also our movement off the ball. I thought uh, Kyle and Oscar were pivotal in that because they kept on getting into the uh, attack. I thought Brian Ombi, especially in the second half, started to come alive, and we, we got him the ball. Um, and he was probably unlucky uh, not to score there. Uh, but you know, once you, you move a team that much, there's going to be gaps. Uh, and we always talk about it. When we create space, we attack it. And that's exactly what we tried to do. Paulo, you played with Phoenix during its lesser years. Um, did you ever imagine that you would be playing them in the USL Cup championship? And uh, what was it like playing, with, playing against an old franchise? Yeah, I mean, uh, from when I was there, I think uh, the goalkeeper coach Corey, he was he was still there, and He's so the only one. yeah, I think he was the only one. Um, but when I was at playing at Phoenix, the league was you wouldn't recognize it as to what it is now. You know, now it's it's so professional. There's so many teams. You know, when I was playing in Phoenix, we were taking road trips to Richmond and playing Friday, Saturday, and then they've come in and like it's changed completely. So I didn't really know what was going to happen with Phoenix when I was there, and now to see them be so successful and to be such a good team and have such a good run and all the, the fan base, you know, when we watch the, when we watch them on TV, you see the fan base and it's, it's impressive what they've done down there. So, you know, 
it's a, it's a great city. It's some of the most fun I've ever had in my life living in Scottsdale. And uh, so for, for them. That's saying a lot. Yeah, for them. <laughs> and Scottsdale's a great place, you know. Uh, but uh, so for them to be, to be, you know, putting such a powerful club out there, not just on the field, but in the community, it, it's pretty awesome to see. What, what did the atmosphere tonight, Paolo, mean to you? This, uh, this crowd. You know, it, it was so awesome. Um, it's it's so energizing, and it was the same way last year in the finals. You know, when we even though, uh, you know, there's a few more people at Slugger last year, but this year, it's, you know, they're right on top of you, and it's and it's just creates such a great atmosphere. And I was talking to one of my buddies too, who's watching the game, and he said, "Your fans are smart. They're educated. You know, they they stand up when even you know a a, a, a casual fan would only celebrate a goal. Whereas you know when we get a good switch or get on a break, you know, you, you hear the energy in the in the stands lift. And so I think that that's just credit to our fans and to, to the community because they're, they're educated fans. It seemed like things got a little chippy at the end of the first half, but second half, uh, the team came out and was very aggressive, got a few shots on, on target or, or close to it. Was there anything said at halftime to, to change the guy or refocus? Them? Yeah, every halftime speech <coughs> that I give, by the yeah, way, the yeah, exactly. I mean, it always changes. It, no, right? I won the game. The halftime speech did. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, <laughs> honestly, no, I didn't. Not honestly, like, uh, you know, that, that's just the ebbs and flows of soccer. You know, sometimes you're on the front foot, sometimes you're on the back foot. I mean, it's the same in any sport. And so, uh, you know, we got in. I know what you mean. In the, in the end of the half, it was a little bit. They were getting a little bit of the ball, and so we had to come in. We refocused. We we tried to get a hold of it again. And then also you have obviously had some words with Drogba, and it was a really good battle between the two of you. Um, I mean, first, just what was that like? And then second, you know, what does it feel like to, to be able to say, you know, I battled with him and came out on top? Yeah, I mean, it's cool. And uh, obviously, you know, he's the captain over there, and I'm the captain here. So we would talk to the ref, and we talked to each other. But honestly, you know, I can't, I can't praise Phoenix enough because it was an enjoyable game. Um, those guys, they're good professionals. They play a good soccer. and, and no one's, you know, trying to get at each other. You know, it was really an enjoyable game to play against them. And I got to give them like a load of credit for that because sometimes you see these these games where it's elimination games and people, you know, have nothing to lose, so they get a little chippy or they or they, you know, do something like that. And these guys were professional the whole time. Sure, they're they're asking for calls. Of course, you see me out there doing the same thing, but they were really, really a, a good team and and fun to play against. Paolo, what was your view on Luke's goal? What did you see on that? Oh, I saw that I should have done much better with it this, the time before. Uh, no, it came out to me, and, and I, uh, I got a toe on it, but I think I should have done better. And, and the guy came off the line and, and set up really nicely for Luke, and he, he took it very, very well. Uh, how do you think, as far as championship experience, being as nil-nil at the half, you go into the second half, obviously you guys won it last year. How much do you think that came into play? You know, maybe some of their guys are a little more inexperienced, obviously Drogba has a little bit of experience in big matches, but everyone else, you know, you guys are back-to-back back now. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to say. I think that, you know, of course it helps to have that experience. But for us, the, the belief was there from, I mean, February 1st, 2017. You know, we, we thought we could win it. And then we came back this year and we thought we could win it. There was never a time in, in any game throughout the season, games we lost, games we won, we always said, come on, you know, we can win this thing. And so I think that was the most important thing was just having the, the core, the, the entire group just really believing we will win this cup. I mean, it, so much. I mean, Hack's a great coach and someone that, uh, you know, I was, I was saying in the in the meeting the other day, like, when when James left, you're kind of scared because you don't know who's going to come in. And then when Hack comes in for us, it was, you know, and he takes over for a week, for two weeks, and you're like, oh, thank God. You know, we, we're in really good hands. This is the guy that's got a great soccer mind. He wants us to play a beautiful style of soccer that we want to play. He gives us the freedom, but he also holds us accountable. So. I mean, I think that that hacks, you know, he's brought so much to our locker room, so much to our soccer team. Let's take two more questions here. What was the hardest part about getting back to the finals? Uh, this, I mean, like I, I said uh, the other day at the press conference, is the league's just gotten better. Every year it gets so much better. So every single game this year was harder than it was the year before, and every single playoff game was harder than it was the year before. So. And, and next year, I expect it's going to be even harder than this year. So, you know, for us, there, there can't be any complacency, you know, week in, week out. Do you, got, both of you expect some of the guys on the team to maybe 
put some feelers out to see if an MLS team will grab him because obviously you guys have the talent level I think to play at that at that level at least individually. I hope so. I mean, honestly, and 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 it's nothing against Louisville and it's nothing against you know the ownership here. They know, you know, we all have high high aspirations and. You know, I think if you look at the last two years, what we've done and, and the performances, you know, it's crazy to me that last year there wasn't three or four guys that, you know, had contracts straight away in the MLS. And this year, I think that there'll be some more opportunities for guys. And, and you know, that was one of the things we talked about, you know, going as far back as James is the team success will bring individual success. So I really hope that that comes to fruition for, you know, a, a big handful of guys on this team. Coach, Paolo, thanks for your time and good yep. celebration. Thank you.